Assalamu alaikum. You're watching Views and News, and I'm Faisal Rahman live from our Islamabad studios. Today we'll be talking about a couple of very important stories, and that is about the new wave of terrorism in Pakistan. Primarily, whether you talk about this very unfortunate incident that took place in Razmak, North Wazirstan, where an ID explosion occurred, and uh, in which uh, six very precious lives were lost. Uh, one captain who was just 24 years old, and there were two JCOs, two Nikes, and one Havaldar. And uh, these sol soldiers, in fact, were on a patrol mission. And uh, earlier than that, if you remember, a few days back, there was this uh, very intense uh, intelligence-based combed uh, operation in which uh, two terrorists were killed. So this was related. Again, there was this attack. And then we'll be talking about, uh, obviously, the role of India. This wasn't the only incident that took place in Pakistan today. A few days ago, there were a few culprits who threw uh, hand grenades on uh, a few of the workers in Balochistan. And today, this convoy was again attacked in Urmara, in which, since it's a developing story, according to certain reports, uh, around eight FC personnel, they have been uh, martyred in that attack, along with seven other guards of OG's DCL. And uh, since I have already mentioned that it's a developing story and we'll keep you updated. And who else is involved? It's India. <coughs> India is using Afghan soil. India is using uh, the Afghan territory primarily to destabilize Pakistan. These attacks basically were conducted by the uh, Indians. They are uh, supporting the non-state actors inside Pakistan and also those inside Afghanistan. So resulting in heavy casualties today. And this is again a part of that warfare which uh, they believe is the right path, but they do not realize that this is eventually going to engulf India itself. Then we'll be also be talking about this future of Afghan peace process. Remember one thing, when we talk about the peace in Afghanistan, that's directly related to peace in Afghanistan, and rather I would say peace in the entire region. And uh, which country doesn't want uh, peace in Afghanistan? Obviously, there's one country, and that is India, because their power show has almost diminished in Afghanistan. They have no control over any authorities out there. Primarily, it's Pakistan that has taken the initiative for the peace talks. Pakistan has played a very important role, I would say, one of the most significant roles ever played in this history of the Afghan occupation. And we really want that Afghan uh, forces should take over. There should be peace in the region. The foreign troops should withdraw. And there should be a proper settlement where the Taliban should also be involved and they should come up with a proper solution. This is exactly what should be the way forward. But there are too many hurdles, too many hindrances in that as well. So to talk about these very important issues we have with us in our studio, let me introduce you to our panelists. We have with us Dr. Raja Kesasar. He's an expert on international relations and foreign affairs. Thank you very much, Raja, for My your time. Pleasure. And we have with us Yasir uh, Jinjua, sir. Yasir Saab is a security analyst. Thank you very much, sir, for your time. And we'll be also talking to Imran Jan Saab. Imran Jan Saab is going to join us through Skype. He's a known columnist. Thank you very much, Imran, for taking out your time and talking Thank to you. PTV World. Now, uh, Dr. Saab, let's start off from you, sir. <clears throat> this new wave of terrorism, sir. Earlier, we were hearing that uh, there could be a conflict that could take place between the Shias and the Sunnis living in Pakistan. Primarily, this was the fault line which was you know, uh, tried to be exposed many times, but nothing happened. The recent killing of Mulana Saab in Karachi. And uh, again, we're talking about these attacks which are taking place in North Waziristan, IED, this improvised explosive device which was placed uh, somewhere alongside the road, eventually ended up blowing the whole vehicle and killing six uh, of our soldiers. Again, Reports are coming from Urmara that there was this attack by the BLA, Balochistan Liberation Army, and the terrorists of that particular group, because it's, it's, it's uh, been declared as a banned outfit, killing eight FC personnel, seven of the guards of OGDC. What's going on, sir? <clears throat> well, uh, thank you, Faisal. Uh, it's a pleasure to see you again after a long hiatus of this COVID. Uh, yeah, indeed, it's quite agonizing that uh, we are, you know, seeing a resurgence of the terrorist activities in Pakistan. 
and uh, this spike is quite horrifying and they are then and then there are the connecting dots as you have uh, mentioned about the series of acts and uh, you would see that you know there is some kind of a connection uh, there is an interconnectivity in all in all of those events and that interconnectivity is that they are aiming at destabilizing pakistan by and large now what is uh, method behind this madness why to destabilize pakistan you see pakistan has uh, attained a significant mileage in last 2 3 years primarily on the foreign policy count very recently pakistan has got elected back to the human rights council of the united nations uh, pakistan is all set to you know go all out brazen against uh, this uh, fat of gray list and uh, uh, apart from that you know the kind of economic take off pakistan wants to achieve and the kind of economic autonomy Pakistan is aspiring in the aftermath of China Pakistan economic corridor because the way it is getting more and more precipitated the more the adversaries and the immediate neighbors uh, on, the, uh, on the on the sides of Pakistan they are getting more perturbed and more anxious. So you see uh, uh, this uh, Modi he is on the record uh, saying in Bangladesh that they were the one who were the behind or they were the one who orchestrated the division of Pakistan. Correct. Ajit Dawal is on the record saying that we are actually fostering terrorism in Balochistan. So and then very recently the most importantly the very recent interview of uh, SAPM on uh, NST Moid Yusuf. Dr. Moid Yusuf you know where he actually went all out and exposed India's face to the rest of the world and India was actually caught pants down uh, in, in this uh, after this particular interview. So you see the kind of uh, diplomatic mileage which Pakistan is accumulating and which you know Pakistan wants to communicate it to the world that Pakistan is now a safer destination, Pakistan is now no more a terror ridden country because India has constantly and persistently invested in this narrative for last two decades. Dr. Mohit Pirzada in his interview very categorically Yusuf. mentioned, uh, Mohit uh, Yusuf, yeah. I always end up saying Mohit Pirzada for some reason. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Yusuf, in fact, was very categorical when he said that $10 million were given to TTP and Daesh. Yeah. Now, this is a very meager amount. Yeah. I'm sure that amount is in billions. That's what they are spending, you know, all over, you know, wherever they can find the non-state actors yeah. and try to bring them inside Pakistan and carry out such yeah. activities. Now, c coming to you, sir, first of all, your take, sir. Recent wave, two very important phenomena, sir. One, the statement of the Army Chief regarding the hybrid warfare, the fifth generation warfare, the non-kinetic warfare as we know of, sir, it's something new. But we have fought and we are still fighting it, sir. If we could be the first uh, military to, in fact, uh, be very successful against this war on terror, which was a new phenomena, I think we'll be able to overcome this fifth generation warfare as well. And we'll be able to, uh, in fact, <clears throat> I think, uh, teach a lot to our enemy. But having said that, sir, security personnel, sir, coming, attack, uh, coming under these attacks, uh, today is a very, very unfortunate day, sir. A young captain lost his life along with uh, two subedars, uh, two naiks, one uh, havaldar. And they were all very mature and seasoned uh, soldiers because they had spent a good time in military, sir, as you know, you yourself have served. Secondly, uh, another attack on uh, the convoy of OGDCL, eight FC personnel, and another seven guards of OGDCL. They came under attack. They were killed as well. Becoming a regular phenomenon, sir. Now, don't you think, sir, high time to, in fact, have a very strong counter narrative? And let's teach them a lesson too, sir. Enough is enough now. Don't uh, you think, sir? Thank you, Faisal. Uh, going into the details of the timing of all these incidents happening, uh, as I was talking to you a few minutes ago as well, last week in Karachi, a cleric was killed. Uh, a prominent uh, religious leader. Uh, Indians are trying to foment Shia Sunni divide by doing these things and by aiding the likes of BLA. The increase in terrorism and the sectarian violence and political instability are all timed at the same time. Tomorrow is the 16th of October. PDM it's, it's, is holding its first uh, meeting, public gathering, 
And this is happening in the aftermath of the statement of the ex-Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif, which is clearly indicating from where he's speaking or from where he's being fed those words, it's surely India. So all these things Indians are orchestrating so that they won't, you were talking about the hybrid warfare and the fifth generation warfare, all behind this is India. Who's the beneficiary if everything happens here in Pakistan? And when you go over to the subject of Afghanistan, we'll mm -hmm. talk about it then mm -hmm. as well. There's one single denominator, and that's India. Because India stands to gain if there is instability in Pakistan. Now, when we were coming out of that phase of instability, we were, as uh, Dr. Sab was saying, we are on the doorstep of being declared uh, compliant on FATF regulations. We have been elected back with 169 out of 193 votes into the Human Rights Council in the United Nations, Indians must be worried and they are really perturbed that their diplomacy is not working and we are winning the hearts. So they want to go back. And a few weeks ago, Indians were declared one of the biggest terrorists because they've been supplying weapons and funds. There was this report, sir. Yes. So it's all about India. We, instead of being very, very diplomatic. I think we need to come out in the open. Dr. Muid Yusuf has been very candid. He clearly put the things on the table. He said the mastermind of APS attack was talking to the people from Indian consulate in Afghanistan. We need to do these things and tell the world in our the best possible way. Diplomats, you know, think tanks, opinion makers, we need to go out and tell the world that the real terrorist is India, who's not interested in the regional peace whether it, it, it is Pakistan or it is Afghanistan. More so, India is trying to divert the attention of the world, what it's not been able to achieve in Ladakh in last five, six months, and now Himachal Pradesh and Arunachal Pradesh. So they want to divert the attention and get us engaged somewhere else. And it's just not Balochistan. By the way, yesterday or day before yesterday, there was an incident on LOC where one of our Havaldar got, yes. uh, uh, he got shahadat. Two days so, ago. Yeah, two days ago. So India has been trying every possible way to destabilize Pakistan because India knows India doesn't stand a ground if on morality or on international norms. Now, now a quick uh, comment, sir, on this particular point and then I'll go to uh, Imran Jan. Normally, what we witnessed over a period of time that whenever the month of October is either approaching or has approached. The <clears throat> escalation increases, the LOC violations, they increase, uh, they get more aggressive, the Indians use heavy weapons <clears throat> normally, and this time there is a lot of tussle going on in the area of Ladakh also. Though the population is around 300,000 in that area, but still there, there is a decent number of Muslims and then Buddhists and as well as Hindus. But the current situation is not supporting the Indians. Their local uh, MLA of BJP, one of, the, one of the individuals, in fact, was very concerned about the future of their people regarding their jobs, the ownership of the land, the investments from the Indian Army, or as the Indians are claiming that we'll make it a, a tourism hub, or for that matter, we'll make it an IT hub. And God knows what sort of, uh, you know, uh, dreams being shown to the people living there. But what I'm saying is, sir, ground reality is very different. Ground reality in Kashmir is also very different. Whether you talk about Jammu or you talk about the valley, both. Uh, do you think there is a probability of some sort of a short conflict between Pakistan and India or, or China and India or maybe all the three countries? Okay, you talked about October. Normally the Because normally the nights are longer. <coughs> this time? Well, we're just out of the monsoon season. And just before, although when we talk about the, the mountain, mountain tops, the snow is already falling on the mountain tops, so it's very cold there. Uh, but October, November is a time when people can think maybe we can launch an, launch an offensive. But I personally think India cannot afford to do so. India cannot afford to launch an offensive at this time. And India actually, if because you go and look at the history. conditions inside India, they are so ripe at the moment that they can go for a war. Look at their economy. Look at other problems they are going through. Look at the 
uh, the fascist mindset that is being developed over there. Look at the way the normal people, the sane people are being sidelined. Faisal, India has never won a war on the battlefield. They always try conspiracies. In East Pakistan was a conspiracy. In Balochistan, they are trying to do a conspiracy. The consulates they have made in Afghanistan is a conspiracy against Pakistan. Ask them to come and fight a war with us on the battlefield and we'll tell them where Delhi is. We they cannot, they, they cannot well. and that's why they do the fifth generation war and all these things mm. because they know they can't fight and win a war. The morale of troops in India right now is so low, the suicide rates are so high that the Indian troops don't, do not want to fight. And One of their three-star generals, serving one, in fact recently complained that the kind of equipment, the winter equipment uh, the soldiers are getting in Ladakh, in Leh and all these areas, it is, it is so substandard that let's see how many people get frostbites there. You know, you're talking about a different ball game. Because Our they, soldiers have served They were in caught CHL. with their pants down. They were not prepared for China to stay as long as China has stayed in Ladakh. China is Chinese going to be there army, for good, sir. They Chinese have army has got the equipment to stay in Ladakh in the winters, in the, in the peak of winters. India was not ready. It has fallen upon them. And literally, if this winter, Indian army soldiers stayed there in Ladakh, we'll all you, see. We'll you, all you'll see. You'll see what happens to them. We'll all see, sir. Uh, Imran Jan sahab, now coming to you. First of all, your take on the current uh, wave of violence in Pakistan. We all fear that uh, you know, never know that soon there could be a soft target uh, by the Indians where they could attack a mosque, a church, maybe a marketplace or something of that sort. Because this is what we have been seeing for the last so many decades. This is what India is up to. And currently, sir, when they're getting so frustrated that this is exactly, uh, you know, the signs of frustration coming out of them, you know, going after people, killing innocent civilians, killing the soldiers through these means, mm. using the non-state actors such as BLA, so and so forth. Your take, sir. So attacking mosques or other places of religion, um, India is not new to that. They do it even on their own soil let alone another soil, and soil of Pakistan, of course, anything goes for that matter. So that is something you can, uh, you can always expect from India. Like I said, they do it even on their own land. Um, what is a little bit confusing is uh, at one side, they sort of send a peace gesture, as Muid Yusuf hinted, actually clearly mentioned that India has expressed a desire to have a conversation with Pakistan. And then on the other side, they indulge in this violence against Pakistan. So last time I checked, that was called Taliban behavior. Because every time the Taliban come to table talks, they increase their violence to give them leverage in the talks. That's how India is behaving right now. If they're really interested in talking to Pakistan, which I, which I personally believe they are, uh, they're increasing the pressure on Pakistan. But Pakistan is not Afghanistan. They will give India a bloody nose if that's what India is thinking. Uh, secondly, um, I really believe, as I mentioned, India is trying to indulge in a conversation in Pakistan in the near future, because remember, post-August 5, 2019, uh, the situation in Kashmir is not something India can sustain. Already before that, Kashmir was the world's most densely militarized zone, uh, and after that, they had to increase close to another close to like 200,000 soldiers in there. That's not cheap, it's expensive. And for a country like India, which doesn't have a lot of money, it is really a long time. And the only profit from that expense is a global shame for India. So what India is trying to achieve, if, if, the, aim, if the aim is to achieve peace eventually and withdraw from Kashmir and go back to pre-August 5, 2019 situation, that's what they're trying to do right now using these tactics. If that's not the aim, if peace is not the aim and going back to that is not the aim so that they can avoid the expenses, then the other uh, two things that come to mind are one, of course, to ensure FAT of problems for Pakistan. And secondly, uh, you can never uh, subtract what states from this. U.S. presidential election is less than a month from now. People are already voting out in the outside in the street, outside in the voting ballots right now. So Donald Trump a few days ago tweeted that 
be back in the States from Afghanistan by Christmas. It's a very aggressive goal, but that's what he tweeted. Many generals do not agree with that, and even Afghan government said, you know, it should not be so quick. Uh, whatever the timeline or the time frame is, India, we should always know this, India does not want the U.S. forces to leave Afghanistan, at least not in the near future. And so when th these sort of things happen from Trump's side, uh, they increase the pressure on this side so that there was an attack on the Taliban, you know, the uh, Taliban, there was a fight between the Taliban and the Afghan government a few days ago, and then the U.S. had to be involved in that. They had to even yeah, attack. They gave the air support uh, to them. <clears throat> they, uh, the U.S. provided the, the air support. Uh, many people said that could be a violation of the deal signed with the Taliban in February this year, but, you know, uh, we'll see what happens with that. For now, the deal is still intact. And so the Afghan government, which again, and, 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 this is another indication why India sees the Afghan government soldiers as their own soldiers, because perhaps what is happening in Pakistan right now is a retaliation for what the Taliban did to the Afghan soldiers a few days ago. And the U.S. had to come, as you mentioned, giving their support. That could be an Indian retaliation. And that's an indication that India sees Afghan soldiers, Afghan government soldiers, as their own soldiers, fighting against the interests of Pakistan on the soil of Afghanistan. Um, because the Taliban whacked them really bad. That's what the news reports are right now, and news are still coming up. So um, on every front, India is trying to create problems for Pakistan, and at the same time trying to undo the problems it has gained in the last year or so uh, after, the pre of, after the annexation of the Kashmir Valley. So um, we will see what happens, because if Biden wins, and that's what the polls are showing right now, but polls could be misleading. We saw that polls are showing Hillary Clinton in 2016 to be the winner, but then yeah. that didn't happen. But the polls are showing that Biden is in a clear lead. If Biden wins, he will absolutely not end the Afghan war anytime soon. He might even send some soldiers back to the I mean, to he Afghanistan. is most likely going to follow the typical orthodox American approach, the approach of the exactly. uh, Democrats. Now, coming to you, Doxa. Now, a couple of points. Uh, Let's suppose, <clears throat> because there is this uh, anti-government uh, rally planned tomorrow as well, and all these opposition political parties are, uh, you know, they'll be showing off their strength in Gujarawala. I was just thinking on my way to work that, God forbid, God forbid, if something goes wrong there, you never know. All you need is one man to penetrate the crowd, and if there is a bomb blast, because most likely there'll be a lot of kids there from different madrasas, a lot of people from uh, the KP side because of the Maulana's uh, presence, then people from PMLN, PPP. We have never seen these three parties getting together. But anyway, these are all Pakistanis at the end of the day. Security concern is uh, the prime concern at the moment, sir, because that could lead to something, God knows, could lead to civil rest also, could lead to anything else as well. Because it seems that, you know, the state of Pakistan, not the government of Pakistan, the state of Pakistan, and in particular the military of Pakistan, is the target. Whether you talk about uh, through the bullets, through the attacks, through or the through narrative. the fifth generation warfare, through the hybrid uh, warfare, whatever. They've been maligned. Today there was a story that uh, there was this letter, for God's sake, I mean, whosoever has served in the military and should please, Ridiculous. I mean, I think this major, what's his name, sir? That Gaurav Arya. Arya. He should learn something from character. us that, you know, it is not Bollywood where Akshay Kumar is going to be the movie with multiple stamps that top secret and ultimate top secret. doesn't work like that. It doesn't work anywhere like this. So I think they should, first of all, <clears throat> get uh, better in their approach <laughs> to how to malign. And secondly, and now, primarily, what anybody else has learned from that. Everybody was saying that, well, this is fake. But what I'm saying is that uh, whether good, bad or ugly, that was on the web. You know, a lot of people might have uh, gotten misled also. That's this is, what what the, yeah, this is exactly what their yeah, purpose is. Kassel, you know, you're, you're absolutely on point. And uh, the guy mm -hmm. who you are referring to is indeed, you know, an imbecile numbskull, you know, who keeps on doing a third rated propaganda couched in the Bollywood bravado as you very rightly pointed out. I wish we had A rated enemies. The problem is we don't even have Khandani enemies, you know. Yeah. That's the problem, so, sir. Yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> Honestly. That, 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 that's very, very right. good. But, yeah. but you know, but, you know but, but that that gets held. 
in India. You know, th that is something, you know, they, they are targeting their domestic audience. Like we were talking about the earlier, the context uh, which is uh, prevalent right now. You see, there is, India has unleashed an onslaught. And that onslaught is that they have imposed a limited war on our borders. We are successfully evading it for now with our operational preparedness. They have unleashed a very <coughs> heinous propaganda warfare against us. Fighting on almost all the fronts. They are, they are going all and out in scuttling the freedom and the liberties for the Kashmiris. They are actually exposing our fault lines uh, and they are trying to instrumentalize them. In a way, if, if uh, the guy you were referring to, uh, a few weeks before he was just uh, uh, you know, coming up with this idea that India should start funding these uh, um, uh, clerics, religious clerics across the different sects so that they could promulgate hate in Pakistan. So, you know, this is the nefarious design. This is actually the ugly face of Hindutva. This is actually the ferocious and the non-accommodative mentality we are now copping up with. Moeed Yusuf was very, very polite and decent. But actually, you know, Indians right now, they, they demand a very furious kind of rebuttal. Reason being, you know, what Indians right now, they, they are actually fueling uh, all those possible uh, sentiments and all those possible avenues they are trying to highlight them, which could bring Pakistan into trouble. What is wrong with India right now? Faisal, hold on. The, the point is, that India have uh, India has consistently and persistently invested in a narrative for last two decades that Pakistan is a rogue nation. Pakistan is a uh, Pakistan sponsors terrorism. You see, uh, Mohit was very on point when he said that India should update its talking points uh, concerning Pakistan because they now sound so redundant and obsolete that they don't make sense anymore. Because you know, a country which is being uh, led by a person who is accused of the uh, massacre of four. 1,500 Muslims on his hand, whose entry was banned to all the major capitals of the world. The visa was rejected. His remember? visa was rejected. Mm. And, 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 and that ruling party and ideology, which has got twice banned in Indian history over terrorism charges. So, you know, now they are talking about terrorism and they are accusing Pakistan of sponsoring terrorism. It is, it is nothing uh, short than, uh, nothing less than a farce. So, you know, that's why we need a very proactive diplomacy. And Pakistan has, as I said earlier, attained a significant mileage in past two and a half years uh, primarily. This is what is actually making India anxious. This is what is, you know, uh, pertaining to India's security calculus because they wanted to isolate Pakistan. But, you know, that didn't uh, materialize because CPAC came at the center stage and it changed the entire uh, equation and the entire landscape. Primarily, that is the real uh, problem that no Indian wants to see a Pakistani nation becoming prosperous. And then they are obsessed. Economically viable. Because this is exactly the problem, sir. Because, uh, you know, uh, no matter how beautiful your country is, if it's not stable, I mean, there's something going <coughs> on, there's no law and order or there's some security concern, nobody's going to come. Nobody, forget about the investments. Nobody's in, going to come to visit. And no, you see this one last point, you know, just uh, day before, you know, the British Airways has conducted Lohar, its flight operation. After 40 years. After 40 years. Yep. Now, that's the change, Pakistan. Now, that's, and and that's the last flight which you know, came that's from, from UK to Islamabad, I was in it, by the way. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> but, you know, that's, that's the real change yeah. which is coming up in Pakistan. Pakistan has... It uh, was declared as the top tourist destination of 2020. Oh, Unfortunately, sir. COVID has, you know, sir, somehow... COVID plus multiple other factors. I think if these issues are sorted out, Pakistan is a brilliant, brilliant, Pakistan brilliant is country. Pakistan to take sir. off. I was interviewing the SAPM on minerals today and I was surprised to know what kind of wealth we have. We just need good direction. Now, uh, sir, a couple of points. One is about the ongoing peace process and the negative effects of the Indian-sponsored terrorism in Pakistan and Afghanistan, where certain non-state actors have been financed by the Indians. It's on record, sir, $10 million. And this is the uh, meager amount which we got to know about. I think it's in billions. <coughs> Financing them, giving them equipment, giving them tasks, giving them certain objectives, and persuading them to attack inside the Pakistani territory. If it's a military target, good enough. If it's a civilian target, it really doesn't matter to them. 
Similarly, sir, this is what is happening in Afghanistan also. So because the moment you come close to a proper negotiation, sir, something happens and you take one step forward and you end up taking four, five, six steps backwards. Okay, before I Did go on to that, if you allow me, I'd just like Please. to add one thing Time to what Dr. Sahib was saying. See, he was talking about pro proactive diplomacy and we talked about this in one program previously as well. Why can't we just go out and start using the Sikhs and the Khalistan movement to our advantage? There's a huge majority of Sikhs in Britain. There's a huge majority of Sikhs in Canada. And Khalistan movement, we need to go out and tell the world. Actually, the Sikhs are waiting for us. So we should actually be throwing their own ball in their own court, actually. So this is my, my take that they're trying to do it with us. We should go back to them. Kashmir is one, but we have Khalistan, we have Nagaland, we have so many other independence movements Manipur, in India. Manipur, Nagaland, Assam, Jhaad Ghand, Assam, Assam, even Behar. So we should, we should be trying Tamil, to Kashmir, capitalize name it. on those independence movements and tell the world what India, the real face of India is. Dr. Saab, I'll just give you one example. I also, in fact, gave this example yesterday in my program. I was shocked to learn that one of the priests, who was obviously a Christian, 83 years old, 83 years old, was picked up by the uh, Indian intelligence agencies uh, from the eastern part, from Jhargand, and was taken to Mumbai for interrogation. He can't even move and he says he's so ill. I mean, he's been framed that, you know, he was once in contact with the mouse rebel. I mean, I'm just thinking, what exactly is brewing in their in the mind? What exactly are they What should them? be the most mockery of the democracy? Yesterday, IPRI has launched, uh, you know, it has circulated a map. Uh, in last one year, there had been 440 instances of internet blockade across the world and 330 had been in India. Oh, yes, sir. So that's, that's, yeah, that's that tells us 75%. That's a democratic India 75%. for you. Now, Going over to the Afghanistan, the recent spike in incidents of violence in Afghanistan in the last few days and weeks, I have a simple question to ask you. It doesn't take a PhD in international relations to understand that who is the beneficiary of this violence and who stands to lose the most? Do you think if the, as they are saying, Taliban are behind these attacks, do you think Taliban are stupid when they are on the doorstep of the resolution of their demands they would launch these attacks. And a win-win solution. So, who's the beneficiary here? The beneficiaries are, as Dr. was also saying, and Imran Jan was also saying, that India stands to benefit from destabilized Afghanistan because India achieves its goals that it keeps Pakistan committed on the Western Front. And it denies China the entry into Afghanistan. And also, when Trump wants to move out, the Pentagon and the CIA doesn't want to move out. So the beneficiaries are all against Pakistan. So they are the <coughs> beneficiaries. So they are the most likely people who are planting these attacks. Anybody can wear shalwar kameez and become look like Taliban. So it's not very difficult. So I would want to believe, I can have all my bets on it, that this is not the Taliban. It's a dirty job of the Indians. Indians, the raw, they are the ones who are planning. And look at the timing, as we were talking about the timing. They're doing this at the same time in Afghanistan. In Balochistan, in North Waziristan, and unfortunately, some of our politicians are also playing in their hands. And that's why what you hear, what PDM, wait till tomorrow morning, see their speeches, what they're going to talk about. They're going to talk about Pakistan army. Shameful. Now they have reversed they, their statement, uh, They've come out in the open. Statement, actually. They, 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 this is the worst they could do to, to the country. At a critical juncture like this, the politicians should have shown unity. And the, the, you're talking about $10 million? I think it's 10 times more than $10 million that India is spending in this entire region, in Afghanistan, in Balochistan, in, and on some of our politicians, unfortunately, to foment this kind of unrest, political unrest, Shia Sunni unrest, sec, uh, separatist unrest in Balochistan, and the derailment of the Afghan peace process. So there's a common denominator which is India, and obviously the Americans don't want to leave as well. Donald Trump wants to leave, but the American generals don't Maybe want to Maybe Indians leave. are trying to create that conducive environment had, for the Americans to make them Karachi stay. On this count, you know, the way they had destabilized Karachi for the decades, funding you know, exactly. politicians from London and uh, carrying out terrorist activities in Karachi, 
when that that that's that's also on the right last Imagine. week's incident of the molana getting killed in karachi Absolutely. people were trying to it's give it a episode. sectarian sector it is not sectarian there's a clear hand of india behind it and we all know it so what we need to do as country our diplomacy we should hold the bull by the horns we should tell the world if we have audio recordings we should play them on on media enough is enough sir because the time has come there I is no come. point of the time has come because you know when it comes to the state do not, i think exactly. the dossiers do not need to remain secret we need to bring them out and tell the world i think the aggressive approach is the is the option now coming to you imran jan now looking at the current situation i mean narendra modi is going to be there for a couple of years imran khan sahab is going to be here for another couple of years despite the fact that there is a lot of political instability currently uh because of uh, this uh you know <clears throat> pdm this pakistan uh, democratic movement as they say well they have the democratic right in everything to do so but there is always one thing which is the most important that is about the law and order situation that is about uh, especially corona these days i mean that is something very very important uh i'm not sure that during such a massive gathering you can actually uh, follow the protocols nobody can so that is going to be another issue but anyway keeping that aside it seems that uh, it is not something just brewing from within there has to be a foreign element involved as, as well your take sir imran jan um um de to destabilize pakistan has always been there and there is no point in doubting that and i just want to uh, say that i completely agree with what dr sub said uh, a few things that he mentioned these are interesting um india is trying to influence uh the us presidential election first of all keep that in mind they're trying to create uh destabilized acti destabilizing activities inside of afghanistan that the impression of look the taliban are not uh, really peaceful so that trump cannot go on election campaign and tout his his victory in afghanistan and his ability to withdraw forces and make him look like a failure on that front so that he can lose and biden can win as i mentioned earlier so that the war can go on that's one thing secondly uh yes we need to get really aggressive dr sab mentioned the khalisan movement and many other such groups of people are scattered and they're in i mean together they're united but they are there india is a bigger country but it is ripe to break up it is ready to break up there is there is so much opportunity for pakistan to exploit and create problems and and create pressure on india uh, by supporting these groups so that is something pakistan is not doing the, the defensive approach is not always good pakistan needs to go on the offensive actually pakistan needs to go for the kill that's what pakistan needs to do um and faisal you're right um india is supporting some of these um, politicians in pakistan and it's funny to listen and hear the words democratic pdm dem the word dem democratic in that group is really funny coming from people like these i i thought i i will never mention this but i do want to say this i wrote an article in in uh, in extra tribune a few uh, week or two ago it was about democracy in pakistan as an iqbal emailed me and he started you know arguing in a very polite manner that you know how he disagreed with with my opinion we had a back and forth discussion and what at one point i asked him if you are so much in support of democracy and i respect that why do you accept maryam nawaz in any role in the party she all she her only credentials are that she's a daughter daughter of nawaz sharif why is she even there why do you even know about her he had no reply to that so people like these to 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 make all the noise about democracy is perhaps the funniest thing to come from pakistan so i will i will not even waste my time paying attention to one word coming from them that's just that those are jokes if you want comic relief you listen to that um so um so yeah pakistan needs to go on the offensive and imran khan is going to be there inshallah modi looks like modi is going to be there for, for a while too and an important thing that I, the point that i want to make is that Kash india is stuck in kashmir right now that's what i tried to say earlier they are now trying to exit and go back it sounds cruel but i will say india is kashmir is becoming india's afghanistan just like afghanistan was for the soviet union and for the united states now and before that for great britain now 
that's what uh, Kashmir is becoming from India. I say we just let them bleed their economy right there, just like what happened to Soviet Union in Afghanistan. As Napoleon said, never can trust your enemy when he's Let them bleed, yeah. Because uh, India isn't a bigger power than Soviet Union, uh, to be very honest. And secondly, one important factor is that maybe the Indians also believe that uh, if peace prevails in Afghanistan, that could actually lead uh, to maybe a final solution of Kashmir, or maybe certain elements from Afghanistan could go inside Kashmir and be a part of the jihad there, Pakistan, which is to be a part of the uh, freedom movement. And this is something which really scares them because they have never fought the Taliban. We have. We understand who they are and what they are capable of. They just need to change their direction. The and we'll States see couldn't fight the Taliban. How the India should forget scared. it. India, that's exactly the point. They know Talibans will do what we tell them. Yeah, and secondly, Faisal, you know, uh, one very interesting point uh, highlighted by Jan Saab and uh, furthering that argument, you know, India is already at the verge of an internal implosion. You know, the kind of consternation which India is uh, going through right now, it is unprecedented. Imagine, a, a every, to, after every five minutes, there is a rape taking place in India. Then, after every five minutes, what ever has, since the program has, started, you there know, must have been at least what 10 has rapes happened in India. To, what has happened to Modi's muscular nationalism in the Gavlan Valley, it, in, it in actually speaks volume of how, you know, uh, this uh, superficial, this bravado was. And I mean, you there know, are so in, many in other, the, other states you should be worried about, Rachel Pradesh and all these northern states. I mean, they and what is not only look like Chinese. <laughs> and where is and where is Modi's good it. governance in this COVID? We'll they are see. about to jump I mean, 10 million uh, active These COVID are the reported cases. ones, sir. These are the reported ones. The reported they have ones. even gone down. Bangladesh has crossed them. Bangladesh GDP is much higher than India. Now. I mean, let's see. Let's bigger the country. Bangladesh is, economy. I mean, is you should always India. spread your legs according to what you have. I mean, the point is that over here, I think they have overstretched themselves, and maybe. Now they have realized that the they expansionist can, maybe, desires, they are paying them off. But Faisal, where, sir? Beyond if you the allow me, Himalayas, where? Revisionism. <laughs> if you allow me, last I think, 30 seconds. Yeah, we should not really f sit on this hope that because our enemy is weak, so we're going to win. We have to do our work. As we talked about proactive uh, diplomacy, diplomacy and certain other things, we should be proactive and not just wait just because India is weak. No, we have to do our things. And those are the things that will take us out. I of mean, sir, there are so many fronts yeah, we set, need to counter. Set our own house in, in order yes. Yes. and then expose your enemy yes. to the best possible extent. Exactly, sir. Rasab, thank you so much. Pleasure. Pleasure. It was a pleasure. Thank and thank you so much, Ansab, for your presence as well. And that's all we have for this week. I'll see you, inshallah, on Monday. Till then, you take good care of yourself. Khuda Hafiz.